So, hello everyone. Nice to see you all here. Uh, I hope uh, you're ready. So take your grab some notebook or uh, open a doc file, open a word file uh, to make some notes because uh, I hope I, can, I, I do my best to uh, give you as much value as you can and so that uh, you can uh, leave this webinar with a uh, pack of uh, full ideas and new ideas that you can uh, try with your, uh, with your business. So um, we'll be focusing on how to um, use gamification to convert clients in financial industry. Uh, some of my case studies uh, will not, well, not, not all of my case studies will be in financial industry, uh, but uh, because the gamification is, is not that much different. Uh, but I, but uh, the way I talk about with marketing goals and then some of the visuals I, uh, and case studies I show is, yeah, is related to financial industry because I see that this is a huge untapped potential um, in that sector uh, because many ads look the same. And in order to stand out, you, you pretty much don't have any, there are, it's very hard to stand out with your marketing, but gamification allows you to do something different, something alternative, unconventional uh, to, to grab attention. And it's actually, it's compliant. If you don't mess up your copy, then uh, games are are uh, are okay to use. Uh, so, and I've seen that over the last gamification has been a trend uh, for for a few years, and then the very like buzzword in marketing uh, among marketers. But not many company, not many marketers still like know where to start, or or they don't have that knowledge uh, to where to begin with. Uh, so uh, this this webinar is meant so that. Um, you, you get more idea, and I, and I see that this is, every industry are using uh, are starting to use gamification. We also have uh, among our clients, we have uh, not only financial industry companies, but companies from consumer brands, and and also even from uh, public organizations. Uh, for example, European Parliament is using it act, uh, and. Uh, yeah, it's using gamification campaigns. And then we also have like companies from uh, clients from automotive industries and uh, yeah, from B2B, from event management, uh, from telecom. So uh, yeah, basically in most of the industries that, uh, that exist. So therefore I think it is coming a sort of thing that uh, you can't overlook and you need to know the basics. Uh, at, and when you don't know anything about gamification, all you know is that that word kind of exists then I think those uh, marketers are a little bit behind. So this is a good way, the webinar is a good way for you to uh, stay on the front, front forefront. Um, so today's um, six step journey uh, will be, so we, I will uh, answer some of the questions regarding gamification. Then I will talk about finding ideas. Then we talk about marketing goals and KPIs that you can achieve. And then implementing gamification into your marketing funnel. Uh, then I will talk about uh, creating ads and promoting the campaign. And then we'll talk about how to maximize those leads that you, you can get. And uh, so here you can, uh, yeah, about me, my name is Andres and uh, I've been with an act uh, for over, over a year now. Uh, because yeah, we started with an act about a year now, so uh, I've been uh, almost since the beginning, and uh, we we came into market and we saw that companies were looking for cost-effective ways to stand out with their marketing, uh, and uh, because yeah, many companies moved much of their media budgets from offline to online, so the competition uh, became uh, more fierce than ever. And, and yeah, since this time I've done, I've worked with hundreds of brands from different uh, industries and helped them to create gamification campaigns that would uh, reach their marketing goals. And um, so now we have yeah, global brands who uh, are, are becoming actors and are becoming to use, uh, use gamification. So um, yeah, you can see some of the names here. They are also from many different industries. But uh, now the one question that I know is on uh, many people's minds is that uh, who actually plays those marketing games? Like who has the time for that? And uh, my target audience are not teenagers. Actually, what uh, our case to this show is that all age groups are interested in simple browser games and they are open to interactivity. So therefore the correct answer, the precise answer to the question who plays the games, the ones you're targeting, just like with any type of advertising. 
we've seen uh, high engagement lengths uh, from uh, both men and women aging uh, 30 to 50. And um, actually our record owner uh, is, is one, uh, one grandma who played, I can, you can see the screenshot, uh, screenshot of the game uh, later, uh, but uh, he played a memory game for uh, 4,300, yeah, 4,300 times. So it was 18 hours of pure game time in total. And, uh, and yeah, she was about uh, 70 plus years old. So, uh, so currently yeah, we don't see that teenagers are more like playful than older age groups. Um, we see that all age groups are, are actually playing. Uh, because yeah, if, if you can use social media, you can play these type of games. Then, and, and I know that uh, there are some people that are from India. Uh, actually, many people uh, from the participants are from India. So I use the statistics to show uh, that uh, there was a research uh, study uh, done in, in India. So over the last year, uh, the 80% um, oh, of the casual gamers became 30 plus years old. Uh, so the, it, it grows rapidly. And yeah, and you can see that gaming is also very popular among uh, 45 to 54 years old. And uh, and you can see that 72% of women gamers are highly committed gamers in in, in India. And and I I've, I've tried to draw some kind of conclusions uh, to uh, about, for example, do uh, gender based difference like do men or do women uh, play these games uh, more often? But actually, I've seen that it's. Uh, it's usually yeah, 50, about 50-50, or as you can see, 45 or 54. But uh, yeah, I've seen opposite uh, statistics as well. And of course, if you're target, if for example, if our uh, user has been a cosmetics brand, then yes, 90% of the players were were female. Uh, but but yeah, usually we see that both women and men and women are uh, are interested in these type of um, simple games. And now the question, do games in marketing actually work or are they just pure entertainment? And uh, maybe you're thinking that, uh, yeah, gamification sounds fun, but uh, we still need to bring results uh, at the end of the day. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I, can, I can try and test it out, but uh, not with, uh, just so that it doesn't uh, take too much budget from our other, other activities. So yeah, I, I see that uh, gamification is actually a pretty serious stuff. Uh, it, it can be used very effectively, uh, and I, I don't think that this is just a pure entertainment and just something that only companies can afford if they don't if they have some extra money to spend. And um, one of the there are two reasons that actually make gamification uh, different from other type of advertising, and um, it's uh, the first one is engagement things. So just to compare, um, I, I definitely don't say that you, gamification is the only thing uh, that you should do in your marketing, uh, but just to, uh, uh, to give a comparison uh, of how it's different from other type of advertising so that you can understand this role of gamification in the marketing mix is the engagement things. So uh, with print ads, you can attract 1.7 seconds uh, target audience uh, with outdoor ad you can get their attention uh, for one and a half seconds and with online banners if you're lucky you can get them to one second to look at your banner so uh, gamification campaigns have a little bit different engagement length on average so uh, by this engagement length i mean what is the average session length uh, of how much people will be engaged so not only the length of one gameplay, but actually if he starts again, so uh, so the whole session. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, write your uh, write your thoughts in the chat. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what is the average session and average engagement length of gamification campaign? Uh, on the right here, you can see type or comment. The chat uh, is is on the right. So uh, write your opinion there. I'd love to see what are your thoughts are. Okay, that's a pretty good, good guess. All right, nice. Yes, good. Okay, I think. So. Okay, whoa, somebody's very, uh, very uh, optimistic. Okay, good guesses, everyone. Uh, I see that uh, I have an, yeah, maybe some of you has, 
have a, have a, have a, have a radar blog or something. But the correct answer is uh, is nine plus minutes. So uh, it's usually uh, differentiating from uh, five to sixteen minutes. So yeah, the record yeah is what we've got this is is about seventeen minutes or. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and so yeah, it's usually differentiating. There are, there are some games that are more engaging. So actually, engagement length is all, is not the only thing that you can look for. For example, Wheel of Fortune is a very effective game to generate leads, uh, but the engagement length of that game is is very low because that game is like a little bit different. But uh, but the reason why I point out this engagement length is that um, uh, is to give you an understanding how to use it in the marketing mix. So you will have some kind of uh, ads that uh, raise awareness or attract them, but then it's good that if you have some kind of ad that would uh, engage them more so that you can get uh, minutes of their attention. Uh, and gamification is, uh, allows that. And so, yeah, this is the, the left one is the game that I mentioned before. Uh, that was, yeah, for, as you can see, very simple game. Uh, that was a, a memory game uh, that can be, uh, that can be used, yeah, in different uh, industries, but yeah, it was, uh, Played by by a grandma over seventy plus years old uh, over four thousand times, and and on the right you see a very simple game uh, with um, with a very simple design. At the first place uh, played two point half hours, second place uh, two hours four minutes, and third place uh, one hour and fifty five minutes. Uh, and actually, this is like not the average engagement length. This is average. Uh, this is the, the length of their gameplay. So they were able to play. Uh, over two hours without losing that one game. So yeah, their score was uh, about uh, 800,000 points. And you might guess that that, that is some uh, teenage uh, gamer, uh, but but no, it, those people were actually the top uh, three where uh, it was a cosmetics brand and uh, those people were uh, women, uh, all were women and they were about, I think, 32 years old. Uh, when looking, yeah, they were commenting their scores on Facebook, so I checked their profiles. So, and, and one thing also that is very different from other type of advertising is that um, you have 100% focus uh, from the target audience because you can't multitask uh, while playing a game. Like when you're listening to radio, you, you're driving a car. Uh, when you're looking at the TV, you're making a sandwich. But uh, but yeah, with, with gamification, it's it's not possible to do anything else uh, at the same time. So uh, and yeah, what we see that uh, and the completion rate is also something that's very high with games. Um, and I will explain later how that uh, plays out in the whole marketing funnel. But they had um, about sixty nine percent or to sixty eight percent of the people who uh, start who click play, they will finish the game as well. So we'll, they will see the end screen. And, and the bounce rate of the games, when a person lands on a game site, then usually it's 16 to 23%. So that means that uh, most of the people who land, they will start actually playing the game. Uh, so gamification, yeah, it's a good way to stand out, uh, but also uh, a good way to increase traffic to your website. So um, if, you, if you have, yeah, you, you can give them a good reason to come and visit your page. Uh, and then you can, you can generate leads very effectively. Uh, you can also uh, get in touch with the leads by pointing out to their game results. And uh, yeah, good like way to start the conversation. And then you can raise brand awareness. And also uh, one thing that also that I've heard financial industries have used uh, is uh, brand trust. So not only brand awareness, but you can also increase your brand trust. You can make your brand more trustful. Uh, so without when he's used to uh, that you usually show them ads about, uh, about your uh, credit uh, terms, and, but, but now you will make something different, something that's uh, where you don't like sell all the time. You, you give something, uh, something cool, cool, something interesting for him to do. So uh, a good way yeah, for a brand trust. And then you can reduce bounce rate plus increase engagement length of your web page, which is uh, good for SEO. So this, this means that those games don't only have to be uh, uh, like sort of campaign so that you will have some kind of time period for one month or two months, but actually games can be permanently on your homepage. Just so if you have traffic coming there every day, then the games would be a good way to engage them, to uh, 
reduce the bounce rate and to actually collect their leads as well. You, after the game, you can you guys start uh, getting their leads, so you uh, you get more uh, from your homepage. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about um, four rules for effective gamification, which is I, I think it's important to know for every um, every marketing marketer because I've had numerous uh, uh, arguments with uh, with different creative people and, and marketing people uh, about gamification, and so uh, I think it's it's good if you if you know these rules. So then uh, the first one is that feedback has to be a reward of an action uh, so that the um, player has to understand why they're getting a feedback for. Uh, so that means if they get the point, uh, which is one with feedback element, or they uh, get a certain uh, place in leaderboard, then he has to understand exactly what he did and why he got that uh, result. So uh, that means if you uh, make your game too complicated, for example, if you have good elements that he has to catch in a game and a bad elements that he has to avoid, then at, at a certain time when games get, game get too fast, then he doesn't understand anymore why he lost the game. So that means that you should uh, choose one, either avoid bad objects or just catch, uh, catch good objects. And the game has to be with a simple interactivity. So um, characteristics of a simple game mechanic is uh, you should have one button to press. So uh, yeah, he, only he can either like uh, yeah do do only one motion or or just click click with uh, do do one click to uh, play the game. And the game should shouldn't have any tutorial. Actually, the only tutorial, for example, that we recommend with our games is if there is a drop game. Uh, where you have to avoid a certain uh, bad objects, then just say, uh, avoid these objects. And that's actually all that you have to say for a player uh, to in order for him to understand the game. Because yeah, the game has to be intuitive. And the reason why it has to be intuitive and very simple is that then you will have, he will have more brain power left to process campaign. Uh, because, uh, and, and his mind will be on the purpose and you can like, you can give out your marketing messages as well, and you can uh, collect his leads and say that, hey, thanks for playing. We are this brand. Come and engage with our products. But when uh, the game is too complicated, then all, all his focus will go uh, into just uh, understanding the game and uh, and engaging with the gameplay, and he doesn't uh, doesn't even notice your brand uh, brand logos or anything. Because yeah, with these games, uh, sometimes uh, there are some creative. Uh, creative people who want to get too complicated with these games, but uh, I always say to them that you're not creating a video game. You're not uh, targeting gamers. Uh, you are making uh, gamification marketing. Uh, so that means that you're targeting people who are surfing the web, who are uh, just in a relaxed mode. They don't have huge brain power currently. He just looked at, on, on like Facebook feed, he has, he's just probably scrolled Facebook feed and uh, on Facebook feed, you don't even have to uh, click to see a video. It just starts itself. So that means that you can't expect him to um, read some manuals or, or to focus a lot. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, one of the proof uh, why actually people, even, even gaming people, like people who actually, they take time to play a game, uh, well, the most downloaded video game uh, proves that. So, what do you think? What is the most uh, downloaded video game? Uh, just type your comment here. I would love to hear your thoughts. So uh, yeah, it does. It, it can be mobile. It can be PC. Whatever. Okay. Candy Crush has been good guess. Good guess. PUBG. All right. Another Candy Crush, okay, PUBG, Mario, Tetris, Candy Crush, Candy Crush. Pokemon Go, oh, I didn't know even that I, still anyone plays that game. All right, good guesses, uh, Solitaire. I think Solitaire, I, I'm not sure if any person has ever downloaded Solitaire, I, that's, uh, that's uh, on the comp computers already. 
So uh, yeah, actually, this, this is yeah. And I, I saw that a few people mentioned Tetris. So maybe the maybe Tetris or uh, or Super Mario might be maybe the most played game. Like if we look at the total time, because those games have been around for uh, tens of years. Uh, but uh, but I, but what what is the statistics that show what is the most downloaded video game? Uh, is currently yeah. Some of the people mentioned that it's uh, PUBG. Uh, some of the people sometimes think it's Fortnite, CS:GO. These these things are uh, are are all good guesses because uh, yeah, you have hundreds of millions of people uh, downloading PUBG. But currently, yeah, actually, I saw that most of people uh, had the correct answer. So yeah, it's Candy Crush. Uh, which is uh, 2.7 billion downloads, and as if you think about this game, uh, then um, what is the thing that a player has to do uh, in that game? Like all you have to do is just use your thumb, and then you will just do this, and then you will do this. That's all all you have to do. And yeah, if you get tired, you will use your index finger. So uh, so super. I think the most simple game that you can ever create. But yeah, they are very effective, and not not all, and they are also very effective in in gamification marketing as well. Because yeah, we had companies from the financial industry as well who has used their brand elements uh, in uh, in this type of uh, game. We have it on our uh, software as well, so that uh, and we see that engagement things are usually the highest uh, that we get uh, with uh, Candy uh, Candy Crush uh, game. Uh, yeah, one person said it's a girlish game. I think uh, you can. Like the currently, yes, you can see this is uh, the first design that I found. But uh, but you can change, customize the design with uh, if you make it if you use different colors, then you can make it look uh, more uh, like more not not that girlish. Uh, you will see an example uh, soon. So, but uh, yeah, so, so one thing that also like um, you should pick one action thing that you uh, that the player can do. So either it would be memorizing or guessing something, directing and aiming jumping or flying, uh, then uh, choose one of these and uh, not uh, try to use uh, one and two. Uh, sometimes, yeah, the same thing. Like, like sometimes creative people, they uh, tend to think that, oh, my game is too easy. I need to put something, uh, something else there. Uh, no, you don't have to. Just pick one and stick to it. Uh, then, um, what is the also one thing that you should keep in mind is that you should have a gradual increase from the sixth second. So, from the sixth uh, second, the uh, player has to understand that okay, this game is uh, is going uh, is getting more complex, and uh, okay, it, it's getting more difficult. Uh, so, I need to pay attention. And then uh, you should uh, make him lose in the first um, in the, in the forty five seconds of the first gameplay. So either make it make the game so complicated that he yeah he has to lose in the forty five second or uh, or the or there's a timer in the game and so then he will so yeah thirty to forty five second that's the optimum uh, time that we've seen so that means that you will end the game on a peak uh, that's the time when the player is uh, like focused uh, is is the highest uh, interested and then if you end it. Uh, it's uh, like he wants to play it even more because uh, it, it may sound unethical to end the game when uh, he's having fun, but uh, but yeah, that that makes him want to play even more. Like you can compare it with Netflix. If, if a person looks at if, if people look at movies, they watch one movie and then they go to sleep. Uh, but uh, when people are looking at series, then uh, they're usually you will watch one series, one episode uh, of one hour. And then that usually ends on a peak. You and then you watch again and you watch again and and you. Uh, that's all you do uh, with your free Sunday. And um, I think the same logic applies here. Uh, if you end on a peak, then uh, you will play again and again and again. And um, uh, creating a gamification campaign. Uh, so uh, you should have. Uh, your uh, think about your purpose at first like uh, what are you trying to promote is it some kind of like product or service that you have is it uh, a new is it existing uh, qualities or uniqueness so uh, so yeah take uh, five seconds now and uh, and write down a brand or or a service that you see that might be might be gamification might help it or, or boost it Okay, now that you've written it down, think about what are you trying to achieve? Uh, are you trying to get uh, get leads? 
so that you can start doing retargeting for them or add them to some email sequences or you want to raise awareness uh, or add brand trust just to make your yourself more recognizable in the uh, among the target audience if you have for example a new new game then uh, what's the then maybe you want to educate your um, or educate your audience or like give knowledge uh, to them uh, in, in a case for example if you have yeah it, it was just mentioned uh, Vipin, thank you uh, financial literacy or or if you have an uh, investment platform then uh, you can use gamification yeah to uh, test you can test high test your knowledge and see how much you know about investing or test how much you know about um, about cryptocurrencies Uh, so, so yeah, think about this. And uh, now let's, when thinking about the game, then at first, uh, what you should do is uh, think about what uh, do we already have. Uh, many times companies sometimes say that uh, I don't have time to create the game or to create the content for a game because it, it uh, people tend to think that it's some kind of very huge task that you need to uh, take. But actually, and then I go to their website and uh, and I see that, oh, there are uh, articles, very valuable articles. There are videos that there are uh, brand mascot. So, uh, so there are many things that can already be used to uh, create a game around them. Uh, for example, I had one um, one game uh, that uh, I, I've had cases where uh, there was a, or it was also a financial company, and they said that oh, like I'm, I don't know which. Uh, game type would work for me, or I don't have any ideas. And then I went to see so see their ad that they had just created over one the banking card, uh, where there was an idea was that uh, a person was uh, was driving a car and and there were, uh, he had to, he, he could use that banking card in different places in the country. So I said that, oh, you, you can use the same like game so that uh, a car drives and he has to catch those banking cards, uh, yeah. Very simple game, but yeah, it can be used. Uh, and yeah, there have been a few questions in the in the chat. I will try to answer them um, later later on. Uh, but uh, yeah, there was a question from Yazir and then question from uh, Binoy. So I will answer them uh, hopefully at the end when I have, have time, or then uh, I will I will send them to you by an email. But now uh, thinking about the. Uh, like figuring out the game idea. So if you have a mascot, I know that not many financial companies have, but sometimes they, they do. So you can use them, you can make them act, uh, use a drop game or a runner game. Uh, then if you're, ser you, if you're promoting a service quality, for example, if your um, transactions are very fast, then uh, you can make a speed uh, reaction game or, uh, or show some, some, so that you have to collect uh, something uh, and promoting um, a service, if you have a very unique uh, service uh, among in, in financials, or if you have some kind of good arguments that can be used uh, in order why a person has to use uh, use your your financial service, then you can make uh, you can use quizzes like "Did you know about this?" or person a personality test so that the person can uh, find out something about himself. Uh, because uh, although uh, many people. I know the target audience is uh, among the financial industry are usually the more rational people sometimes, if, if you're, especially if you have an investment platform. Uh, so, but, but in that case, it doesn't mean that they wouldn't be interested in, in gamification uh, because uh, those people still want to uh, get, want to find out something new about themselves or uh, get some new ideas or, or learn new facts earlier than anyone else. And so gamification is a, is a good way that you can uh, you can use in that case. So here are some of the ideas uh, for financial industry uh, that uh, that um, I, I know uh, or, or I can point out. And uh, there are, of course, tens of uh, other ideas also. But here are some that I can uh, I can share with you. Uh, in order to get your uh, like ideas rolling, then you can go to adapt.me slash games. So there you can see the most common uh, gamification uh, mechanics uh, that uh, that are effective and that people know how to use them. Those are proven games. So, uh, and then you can see that uh, maybe maybe you get some ideas rolling, like which type of uh, game types um, 
uh, are are good to associate with your brand. But yeah, one of the yeah, you can use a personality test where you effectively find out which type of money spender are you, or find out which type of investor are you, or uh, are you find out which type of uh, yeah investing uh, opportunities suit for you, or uh, drop game catch coins in your wallet, or Candy Crush uh, swap coins and our brand elements. Uh, runner game reach, reach as far as you can in your financial journey. Uh, for example, we had um, we had it was actually a university uh, it was uh, and uh, and they had a game called uh, uh, reach uh, as far as you can in your student journey. And so there was a, it was a Super Mario based game where you had to uh, run. Uh, I can actually I can show it. So one second, I will show how the game uh, looked like then you understand better what, I, what I'm talking about. So yeah, if you're on the other, other tab, then uh, one more come, uh, come to this tab and then you can see. So uh, let's translate it to English. Reach the, forest, so reach the forest on the student's journey. You need to collect these stars, but you need to avoid uh, obstacles, which are uh, sleep, uh, social media, booze, and F marks. So now you can see here an uh, enthusiastic student with a backpack running and, uh, and try to, yeah, now there is a sleep uh, on the way. So you can use the same logic uh, among financial company. Yeah, you can do it also that social media is something he has to avoid, maybe negative people around him, uh, cars, uh, luxury elements uh, that are trying to get his attention to buy themselves. But no, you need to like save your money for, uh, for, the, for investing. Yeah, and and the same same game was actually uh, also used uh, uh, used among uh, one financial uh, company as well. It was the logic was that um, get financially fit uh, for the summer, and and then you also there was a person running and had to jump over over obstacles. Okay, let's get uh, slides back. And uh, yeah, when you're creating the design, then you should uh, show your prizes. And uh, like you can see uh, here, you can see like prizes are on the on the left and on the right. Here is also here is one uh, financial company, and uh, you can also they are showing how many of these prizes do they have. Like one time this uh, coupon, and uh, and yeah, and you can see see their brand as well. So show your brand. Uh, it, here you can see uh, they are using it in their in their. Um, in their score panel, there are also some, and then you should understand that the ninety percent of the players are from uh, from mobile. Uh, so that means that your your game you need to keep in mind that first uh, be like mobile first. So all games that are in, in adapt uh, they are also uh, mobile mobile friendly and uh, scalable. So then that means that uh, you should keep in mind that you don't have that much space. Uh, you need to like think uh, very well. But, but you still have time. So here you can see one Candy Crush game. Uh, and there was a one person who said that Candy Crush looks very girlish. But I think you can see this game where uh, they used uh, different colors. And I, I don't think it's that girlish anymore. Because there were, there were men actually playing this game as well, very enthusiastically. Uh, and, uh, and this game, uh, yeah, you can also show your product uh, on the So uh, here you can show something. Uh, yeah, you can show it basically your ads, your, your messages uh, on the bottom of the game. And when you're creating texts, then you should keep them as short as possible. So here's one financial industry company who uh, their text was play our uh, running game and see how financially fit you are. Get at least 100 points to participate in a raffle. Yeah, add your contact details, play, and that, that's it. Nothing else needed. You don't have to say that, oh, our, our game works like this or like this. Like, um, that's all you, you have to say. And, but you also you can spice up your copy a little bit. So this is an example from, um, from a food industry. But I think the same logic can be applied in, in every industry. Uh, so uh, they, they had also a Candy Crush based game. But their copy was that Ego family is preparing uh, for spring egg games. Help them put together teams of three and let the egg games begin. And uh, as you can assume, this was uh, Easter game, and uh, and also yeah, you can 
it also lowers the bounce rate a little bit if you have a better um, better copy. And then uh, if you're gaining your ads creatives to get their attention, uh, then uh, you should use uh, short phrases like win and play. You should show the prizes, then you should show the game and, and you should make the design similar uh, to the game page. So um, yeah, just like you can see right here. You should use buttons, so uh, yeah, play the game button. And you should have different visuals for different ad placements. And some tips for media planning. Uh, you should use different channels. Uh, yeah, this is actually basic media planning, but I think uh, sometimes uh, companies tend to get, uh, like, like the media planning part is actually, is very important. Uh, it's actually, I think even a little bit more important than uh, creating the game because Gamification game itself usually works. If you get people to click uh, to and then land on a game page, then usually like the job, usually the game works. Like uh, even if it's uh, if if the design is not that good, usually people start the game. The bounce rates uh, stay the same between sixteen to twenty three. Uh, but I think yeah, the thing where some by sometimes like uh, companies don't put too much effort into like catching people's attention to actually uh, first click. So, uh, and what we've seen so far uh, is that Facebook gives the lowest cost per click. This is really depending on a country sometimes and sometimes in a target audience and sometimes among uh, how good you are at media planning. But that is, yeah, something that we've seen so far. And uh, why Facebook is also a good place is that you can uh, make it, you can use conversion campaign on Facebook and you can uh, add event uh, for it. Uh, play button. So that means that you will only play uh, when a person uh, clicks play button. Uh, you, that, that's the only time when you pay. So that means that you, you can start paying per gameplay. And uh, that has uh, got uh, the, the lowest cost per engagement among, uh, among uh, our users. And then you should change the visuals throughout the campaign period. If you have a campaign, at, like I mentioned, you can use like permanently a game on your website like throughout the year. Uh, but uh, if you have a campaign period, then uh, you either, if you want to keep your campaign uh, active for over a month, then you should change the visuals uh, or, or create a new game. Um, and then one thing also, which is very effective is that if you're collecting emails, then um, after two weeks of time, uh, use those uh, players' emails and create lookalike audience. That uh, that works very well as well. And if you can, then use different visuals for different target groups uh, by pointing out to what what or the maybe use uh, show different. If you have different prizes uh, that you can you can give out, then uh, you can give away. Then you can uh, use different uh, prizes for different audiences according to uh, what they might be interested in. Uh, but now the lead generation, which actually, which is the most uh, common usage uh, among uh, financial services. Uh, so games work for lead gen because they have, customers have a reason to fill out forms and you can collect valuable information for, uh, for every lead and you have a reason to open a conversation. So the funnel usually looks like this, that you will have an ad or a post uh, or an email or anything that you can use to get their attention. First, then they will click uh, and they will um, go to the game link and then you can get in touch with the leads and then you can start doing uh, remarketing. Uh, we always recommend to have a Facebook script, uh, pixel script code uh, on the game site. So that means that uh, games can be uh, top of funnel activity and then you can start uh, retargeting uh, those sales focused ads uh, to them. And if leads are important, you should ask them uh, before the game. So we, here's also one Easter game from a financial service company. And, uh, and they also, they, uh, yeah, ask the emails before the game. The bounce rate doesn't change that much. So the bounce rate, if you don't ask emails, then the bounce rate is about 16%. And if you ask them, it's about 23. And you can use uh, those text-based games that I mentioned before uh, about finding out which type of investor are you or find out which type of money spender are you or uh, those uh, those games or, or yeah, find out how much you know about uh, financial literacy, then um, you can get more information for every lead. For example, we had, this was not uh, from a financial industry, but it was from a home decoration industry. But I think the same logic applies. Um, they had a, a, had a game, uh, find out which type of home decorator 
are you? And so they showed uh, for answers, they had questions like, where would you spend uh, most time? And the pictures that they showed for options were actually their own products, uh, you can see here. So uh, then what they got, they got um, 9,200 9, leads in two weeks uh, with the preferences. So they were able to do segments, uh, people of hundreds, about 300 people in one segment, and, uh, and then were able to do very targeted emailing. So yeah, that is also something that you can, you can do to find out, for example, certain people are industry interested in loans industry, the, in, uh, in gold, some, some people in industry the, in, in real estate or, or whatever that is related to financials. And then you can use it uh, for very targeted, uh, targeted, uh, targeted messaging. And uh, here's one case, case study that was, uh, that I can share. So um, numbers on the left, I actually, I usually don't like to share because that's 100% dependent uh, on uh, what's your media budget. But yeah, that was, uh, that those were their numbers. But yeah, on the right, these numbers are usually something that we see are the same um, among different campaigns. So yeah, they got uh, gameplays uh, over 400,000. And average engagement length was uh, very high. Um, and then, yeah, about the goal that I mentioned before, where to reduce bounce rate and increase engagement length of your web page uh, by adding uh, your game, like game inside the web. So, uh, yeah, here I, I created a, a quick example of an act game, uh, an act website. So yeah, this is um, this is something good for uh, to reach your SEO goals. And, um, and to convert new clients, how the funnel looks like then uh, in that situation is that you will have also an ad or a post or whatever to get their attention. Then uh, you can, you, yeah, you can be certain that 75 to 82% of the players will start the game when they land on a game page. Then about 92 to 98% finish the game. And when you have some links where you're directing them after the game, then 10 to 30% are clicking to the next pages. And now they can become a new client. And um, this becoming a new client, this like depends on your uh, offerings and, and your landing page. Uh, but yeah, we've had the cases. So here's a financial company. This was um, their, uh, um, their ad, how they draw attention. So it was a video of a game. Then this was a game page. And after the game, uh, they had yeah re your results 15 points you will participate if you collected at least 100 points but do you want a small loan offer and they had embedded this uh, calculator here a loan calculator and when a and person can already click the apply now and this directed him to uh, their website so this is a way how you can use gamification to actually for conversion not only lead generation but if a person ha doesn't click this apply now you still have their emails so some of the people that click on it, so you can use it like for two purposes, uh, lead generation and uh, immediate conversion. Um, yeah, so I think games can be used in, in a buyer journey. So um, in uh, bringing attention and standing out because games are contagious, then you can use it for consideration phase. You can give information for, to help decide and uh, and you can use them for Im immediate conversion this is a case study that uh, that's not that that's uh, from a different industry but i think um, i really like this case study. i think uh, maybe you get some ideas that you can use in your case as well so it was a python conference uh, for developers and they had to um, sell more tickets than previous years about two times more so uh, they thought that gamification would be a good way to do it so what they did is they created a Wheel of Fortune game and uh, you were able to win uh, their tickets or, or their merchandise. The, and, and there was, so, and, and they usually what the game uh, games have is uh, like, like what the events usually have is that you have a certain period where you can buy their tickets with a discounted price. They didn't do it. They just said that we have a game and you can, uh, Maybe you can win either discounted tickets or merchandise or, or free tickets or, or whatever. So, and then uh, about 98, the game was built uh, this way that about 98% of the players 
one uh, discounted ticket, it was 50 euros, uh, was the price of the ticket. And they saw that conversion was pretty high among those uh, people because um, there's a loss aversion effect. Uh, people had won something and they don't want to lose it. So they felt that they had won that ticket and, and they should buy it. Uh, so, so yeah, instead of doing uh, what everyone else does, just by saying that, hey, you have, uh, we have, you can buy a discount ticket for uh, until the 1st of August, they just, they just said that, uh, hey, scroll a wheel and maybe you can win, win a ticket. Uh, so uh, what uh, I can show now is that I will, I will uh, share my screen again and I can um, do a quick overview because some of the people asked um, how, uh, what's actually our software. So, so now if you're thinking about uh, creating games, then uh, you, can, you can use um, software development companies or if you have uh, in-house uh, software developers, then you can definitely use them. Usually what we've seen is that uh, using, like, like creating games from scratch is very expensive. It takes usually thousands and tens of thousands of euros and uh, months of work. Uh, but uh, luckily, there are there are tools uh, around uh, that can be used uh, where there are templates, uh, and that act is one of them. So, uh, so we have a different game types, which are the most common ones here on our software, and uh, our games are divided into three categories. So there are uh, text-based games like quizzes and personality tests. Then there are raffle-based games like Wheel of Fortune and Scratch Cards, and more playful games like different things are uh, falling down or something like that. And, um, and then um, in order to create the branded game, so for example, a drop game, then all you have to do is just uh, change these design properties, upload your own design, then uh, upload what is the player image here. Uh, you can change the game rules. Then you can add your copy here. Uh, you can customize the registration form. You can add uh, how, the, how the leaderboard uh, looks like, what are the terms and conditions. Then you can also add automated pricing. So that means that you can have one uh, big price that can be win, uh, that will be raffled. But you can also have some discounted price that can be, that are instant win. And you can win it by finishing the game. So that means everyone win them. Or you can win it at, with, when you get at least 100 score. And then you can get, you can send out automated emails to all the, all the players and all the winners. Uh, and, and yeah, the games can either be in a separated uh, landing page, so uh, we offer our own hosting as well if you want to get the campaigns running very quickly. Uh, but you can easily embed it into other pages or into your web pages as well by just copying this uh, script code right here, uh, pasting it, and then you can have it on your, uh, it becomes part of your website. Um, and then, yeah, we, we track anything uh, that's important in marketing, how many visitors, unique leads, bounce rate, how many people have started the game, what's the completion and the average uh, session. And then we are also tracking where the traffic is coming in uh, and, uh, and how many buttons have been pressed. So if you have a button, hey, become uh, our client in our financial or, or do some deposit, uh, then uh, we can track how many people actually click on that button. And yeah, and all the leads can be exported into a CSV or XLS file. Uh, so yeah, quick uh, quick overview about the act. But uh, if you're yeah, if you're thinking about um, which games might be useful for you, then you can go to adapt.me slash games, and you can like see here are different uh, games that are most common ones and the most uh, proven ones in the world. And yeah, but we're bringing in new games in about um, every two weeks. And uh, by the end of this year, we will have estimately about uh, about 30 different game types that uh, that you can choose from. But um, I really liked uh, staying uh, with you. So now I just uh, did, I published an offer so that you can book a demo uh, with us. If, yeah, if, if you see that uh, you would like to get some personalized uh, consultation on how gamification can help your business or your services you, um, and how it could help reach your marketing goals, then I'd happily uh, talk to you and have a, have a, have a chat with you. So uh, I still have some time slots in the, in the July. So uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me and uh, let's, uh, let's see how gamification can help you. 
but uh, but thanks thanks for participating uh, i hope you enjoyed this time if you if you have time then leave some feedback for me uh, on linkedin or, or via email uh, but uh, yeah until then uh, see you see you in the future hopefully or see you see you on linkedin uh, or, or see you on the next webinars thanks and have a great day